SpaceX is going to make a revolutionary leap in February. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. In Starship Flight 3, scheduled for February, the company will demonstrate for the first time key technologies for Artemis 3. If successful, this will make the Starship's journey to Mars much shorter. Obviously, to make it possible, SpaceX has invested heavily in flight logistics, one of which cannot help but mention the recent upgrades in the orbital tank farm. What Elon Musk just did with the SpaceX tank farm is more mind-blowing than you think. We know that to launch the world's most powerful rocket, SpaceX has designed a Marvel infrastructure called Stage Zero. Modern, but do you believe they are perfect? Honestly, no. We can see that clearly in two recent Starship test flights, suggesting that some parts of this ground system were unable to withstand the frenzy of the 33 Raptor engines. Among those, we should forget or should not forget the vertical tanks with denting in their body in the orbital tank farm. The vertical storage tank is a collection of large tanks that just sit a few meters away from the launch tower. They originally were used to store liquid oxygen, liquid methane, liquid nitrogen, and water. To protect the liquid inside, the tank must be formed by two layers, GSE and shell. There are smaller, gray GSE tanks on the inside which will hold the liquids. They are covered by cryotank shells for insulation. It was long believed that there would be a vacuum between the two tanks for insulation. However, the shells are likely not strong enough to withstand the pressure from the exhaust gas of Starship's engines. Therefore, it's so dangerous to place these tanks near a sensitive area like OLM, where Starship rocket showcases its power. The dents in the shell caused by the crazy force of 33 Raptor engines say it all. Does SpaceX regret placing the tanks at such a closed distance? The answer is definitely yes. Does SpaceX correct the mistake? Yes, again. To prevent any risk of damage or even catastrophic failure in the coming test flights, SpaceX has conducted the big milestone transition from vertical tanks to horizontal tanks, or giant hot dog tanks as Elon called them. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks as opposed to the va vacuum jacketed giant hot dog tanks. Those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be yeah, probably removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. This announcement was given by Elon Musk after Starship Flight 2. After that, the media recorded a series of developments happening at Starbase to prove that this statement was accurate. On January 13th, new vaporizers arrived at the launch site, and there will likely be plenty of them in the coming days. This system would be used to replace the functionality of the water tanks in the orbital tank farm. In early this month, a team of SpaceX workers was observed removing one of the eight towering vertical tanks, called a water tank. It started with the removal of the shell unveiling the GSE layer inside. One day later, it's the turn for the second water tank, namely GSE-8, to be demolished its shell. For people living under the rock, GSE-8 was originally intended to be a methane storage tank when it was installed in October of 2021. It was later reproposed as a water tank in Julie of 2022. After the shells were scrapped, the cores inside would have a similar fate. Once two water tanks disappear entirely, SpaceX might install new vaporizers in place of them. Being a part of a large heat exchange system, similar to the self-pressurizing capability on the booster and the ship, the water tanks pressurize five vertical cold tanks and seven horizontal cold tanks within the farm. Meanwhile, a new vaporization system will be used to deliver the vaporized liquids such as nitrogen, oxygen, and methane back to the cryogenic storage tanks. This aims to replace the fluid as it is being rapidly pumped out, so prevents the storage tanks from collapsing. More notably, the addition of vaporizers also would benefit the pumping rate of both liquid oxygen and liquid methane into the ship and booster especially within the context of the recent increase in pump capacity. The increased pump capacity is thanks to the addition of liquid oxygen pumps and subcoolers. This is part of SpaceX's plan to expand the orbital tank farm. Perhaps SpaceX's next step would be 
phasing out the remaining tanks. The types of liquid in those tanks would be stored in the hot dog tanks in the future. It explains why, in November of last year, we witnessed the arrival of the large horizontal tanks at Starbase. This massive cryo hot dog tank was positioned upon arrival with space for an additional eight tanks. Horizontal tanks, when put into operation, will be completely shielded by concrete fences surrounding them. At the time I made this report, the sixth hot dog tank had already been installed in the orbital tank farm, meaning there were two left to complete. SpaceX has been getting closer than ever to its target to have hardware ready this month. Next, before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. So, why did SpaceX switch from vertical tanks to horizontal tanks instead of simply moving the collection of vertical tank farms further away from OLM? Well, horizontal structures have significant advantages that vertical structures do not have. Horizontally oriented tanks are more stable than their vertically positioned counterparts, especially during transportation or seismic concerns. The lower center of gravity also makes horizontal tanks more accessible for maintenance and cleaning purposes. It's more convenient in desired locations and eliminates the hassle of dealing with a tank that is a few inches too tall. They can also be easily customized with additional features like multiple compartments, pumps, and accessories. This makes them ideal for applications requiring storage of various chemicals or direct chemical distribution from the tank. Another point is about the regulation. As I said, liquid methane was originally intended to be stored in vertical tanks instead of the current horizontal tanks. SpaceX installed the second of the farm's two vertical SpaceX-built cryogenic liquid methane tanks in mid-October 2021. All seven cryogenic tanks had sleeves designed to be filled with foam insulation, effectively completing the farm's basic structure half a year after assembly began. However, around the same time, SpaceX also installed two horizontal tanks that were also identified as liquid methane storage, giving the overall tank farm far more fuel storage than its oxidizer tanks could match. Starship's Raptor engines burn about 3.55 kilograms of oxidizer for every one kilogram of liquid methane. As work on the vertical liquid methane tanks appeared to slow to a crawl, it took until December 2021 for SpaceX to begin cleaning and proofing the farm's horizontal liquid methane tanks with liquid nitrogen. By that time, a rough, unofficial narrative had been constructed to explain the lack of progress on the farm's fuel half. SpaceX appeared to have designed the first orbital-class Starship tank farm, a compact and pleasingly symmetric set of eight vertical storage tanks without taking into consideration rudimentary Texas regulations for the storage of liquid natural gas and methane. By all appearances, that conclusion was correct, as the farm was visibly violating several rules, namely the requirements that all liquid methane storage be surrounded by six-foot-tall retaining walls and that all associated plumbing not be situated under power cabling. As it exists, the liquid methane side of the vertical tank farm violates both of those rules, and it's not obvious that there is actually enough space between the two vertical methane tanks to build a retaining wall with two feet of horizontal clearance. It's possible that the situation is more complex and that SpaceX intentionally broke those rules or was pursuing an exception to them, but the end result was that the company later fully refocused on horizontal tanks for storing liquid methane. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.